Happy Thursday to you, everyone. Have you ever eavesdropped on two people having an argument? Or have you ever witnessed, maybe as a bystander, two people actually in a fight? And if you have, which I'm sure you probably have at this point in your life, how did it make you feel? Huh? How did it make you feel? And more importantly, how did it affect your interactions with that person or persons after the conflict? What did it do to you? What, what happened? Yeah, this is known as eavesdropper effect. And it's one of these things in science I just think is so cool. I love so much about nature and all the tools that she uses to actually blunt aggression. Everything from hierarchies to dispersal to play, to maturity, and turning on switches that were not turned on when I was younger, turning them on later when I'm older. And then she even gave them game theory and gave them strategies to use. Two of them, of which has subcategories, knows the dove strategy, is uh, to blunt aggression, to either display or flee. So she does so many things because she doesn't want her group living predators to kill one another all the time. So this is one of those cool ones today, and I'm, I'm really happy to kind of share it with you. I've known about it for years, and, it, and its effect on dogs, I personally have witnessed it many times. And of course, I've used it to explain why dogs behave in certain ways towards their owners immediately right after a conflict. Because again, the owners are left scratching their head going, okay, I wasn't arguing with my dog. I wasn't fighting with my dog. I wasn't even fighting near my dog. And yet right after the fight, my dog was fearful of me. It avoided me for like days. What's going on here? So again, known as the eavesdropper effects. The eavesdropper effects occur when the observer of an aggressive interaction changes its assessment of the fighting abilities of those it has observed. Yeah, you bet. They're assessing that. They're sitting there watching. You're doing the same thing. You're going, oh, oh, that person's winning. Oh my gosh, that person's getting handed to them. Holy cow. Dang, what's going to happen next? We're learning from that. We're observing and learning, and so do animals. Any group living animal does this. Through observation, bystanders learn beforehand something about the opponents they may face in the future. So they learn from that. Eavesdropper effects have been found to be in birds, to be in mammals, and to be in fish. And experiments that have been conducted have been wide-ranging, everything from primates to baboons, to fish, and one of the ones I remember studying a long, long time ago was one that involved in which ethologists took uh, what's known as green swordtail fish. And it's really cool. They put them in a big tank. And in this big aquarium or this big tank, they put a pair of the fish. So I'll just do this. Now, maybe I'll give them a little tail here. Yeah. Oh, I, I don't know if that just helped my cause or not. <laughs> Excuse me on the art there. Okay, so they put a pair of these green swordtail fish in the tank, ones that they knew would be aggressive, because why? Because males in that particular uh, fish species, they, they operate off of a linear dominant type hierarchy. So again, it's the highest ranking male to the lowest ranking male, so it's not hard to get someone to have a fight when you have number one paired together. So they put them in a tank, and they knew these two would get into a fight eventually over something. And what they did as well is they put a one-way mirror right here in the middle of the tank, a one-way mirror. And on the other side, they put a bunch of observers. Okay, I'm doing my best to draw some fish here, not doing a good job, but just go with me on it, okay? Stick with me here. So a bunch of fish over here, they're the observers. They're the ones that are eavesdropping. And because it was a one-way mirror, these two antagonists over here didn't realize there were bystanders watching them because that will be coming in another video later. What does that effect do? Hey, when you have a crowd, what does it do for you? What happens when you know people are watching what you're doing? Okay, so when we have eavesdropper effects here, these fish watch these fish interact. And then when they finish with this and they interact, they would pair one of these fish with one of these. And they would just keep doing it, pairing them with one of the winner and also with the loser. They would pair them and then observe their, their behavior. And then they turn around and they did the same experiment again using fish that would be antagonist towards one another. And then they put an opaque uh, obstacle or what I should say, just some sort of a, 
uh, where the fish could not see through. So they put this inside the aquarium, and now they could not see them, they couldn't see them, and then they paired them together just to see if there was any sort of effect whatsoever. And lo and behold, here's what they found out that's, uh, again, you wouldn't really even have to study in fish. Again, this has been studied in a wide range of mammals and a wide range of birds, and they get the exact same results every single time they study it. What they found was real quickly that the fish that observed through the one-way mirror were more likely to avoid the winner than those in the opaque. Because the opaque ones, again, yeah, that only makes sense. They didn't realize what was going on on the other side of that partition, that opaque partition. But these did. They were able to see through. And they watched what happened here. They watched and learned who was the winner and who was the loser. So whenever they got paired with that winner, they were more likely to avoid that winner. They stayed away from that winner. They did everything they could. Don't even come over here. I don't want to be near you. Not at all. Even though these fish had known these fish for a long time, it wasn't like you're a stranger. There were no immigrants in this study. They knew one another. This was simply my actions now as this fish over here was based upon the actions and the outcome of the conflict between the fish on the other side of the one-way mirror. They also learned another thing about the one-way mirror fish, the observers, the eavesdroppers per se, that they were less likely to initiate aggressive behavior against losers, even losers. So you think, okay, well, seeing how that little dude got it handed to him, <laughs> well, I, I'm thinking I'm seeing an opportunity here, and I am going to go ahead and use that opportunity while you're down and out, while you're worn out from that conflict. I think I'll just jump on in here too and see if I can become a winner today and maybe even move up a notch here in this hierarchy because it sure means a whole lot to me. However, stop. Go easier, fella. Put the brakes on because here's what happened. They did not do that. They did not take an opportunity to do this when one of two conditions occurred. One, when the losers that had persisted in their fights, meaning when they observed a loser who said, I'm not going out in the first round. We're going to stay in this thing for 12 rounds, and then there's going to be a vote. And if it's unanimous, it's unanimous, but you are not knocking me out in the first round. These losers persisted in their fight against the winner. So these guys are going, oh, 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 no, no, no. He may have lost, but that was one heck of a fight. I am not even going to tangle with that particular loser. Because to me, it's me that's going to lose if I do so. And then there's a second condition. Those losers who maybe not did not persist for a long time in the fight, they simply elevated their abilities, their fight, their aggression, to levels that these fish had not observed in that particular loser ever before. And now they're going, whoa, I didn't know he had it in him. I had no clue. That dude has got something in the tank there. And so because of that, they adjusted their behavior. They were more than likely to avoid the losers just like they did the winners. And no matter what, even when they didn't avoid them, they held back. They checked their behavior so that they would not initiate any sort of aggressive response to the loser. So yeah, so you kind of get this overall picture of avoidance. But man, I am not done yet. I'm not done yet. They also studied the underlying proximate mechanisms. And here's what they found out, that the levels of testosterone measured in the eavesdroppers before they saw the fight and after they saw the fight. They measured those testosterone levels. And after the fight, there was an increase in the testosterone. An increase, big time, measurable. Yeah, you can actually quantify, put it down on paper and say, hey, there was a difference. And if I get reviewed by my peers, my peers will agree with me. There was a difference. So why does this testosterone, why was it elevated? Well, again, one of the hypotheses is this. They believe that the benefit of eavesdropping, if the winner of subsequent attacks, others, including the eavesdroppers, then that elevated testosterone would actually help me survive that attack. Meaning it kind of prepares me so that in case this winner is feeling it going, okay, well, I, today I'm 1-0, might as well just keep it rolling here. 
Might as well. There's been a little bit of unrest here in this hierarchy, a little instability. Might as well make sure it becomes very stable. And that does happen. After they're stimulated, overstimulated, watch a dog in a dog fight. Man, they're pumped. Their arousal column is up. The stress response, they are going, they are going. And as soon as they get done with one, they immediately turn on another one. Just go watch a dog part at some point, and you'll see what I'm talking about. They'll turn on the next one. So they believe that this immediate rise in testosterone, definitely immediately then over subsequent weeks, was to prepare the observer, the eavesdropper, in case it got attacked by that winner. Okay, so that's, that's pretty cool. And also, it would, be, it would better prepare the eavesdropper for future aggressive interactions by indirectly affecting attention, learning, and memory in ways that might prove beneficial. So yeah, I always tell people when your stress response is, is uh, immediately mobilized, then one of the things that occurs is you have a sudden increase in cognition. Yeah, have something happen to you, you're sitting at your house and all of a sudden you believe you hear your back door being kicked in and trust me, your mind's going a thousand miles an hour. What the heck was that? Was that someone breaking in? If they are breaking in, what am I going to do? Do I run upstairs? Do I run out back? Do I run out front? Do I call the police? Do I go get a friend? Yeah, a, or do I stick my dog on them? You know, go like in that movie. <laughs> okay, so yeah, they, your mind's going a thousand miles an hour. Well, this testosterone helps with all this as well as they found out that, man, I, my eavesdropping, I learned to pay attention to these little subtle cues that are being put out and some not so subtle in the aggression. I've learned from this. I'm, uh, I'm definitely uh, developing a memory of this event and how to avoid this event. And the testosterone is just kind of giving me that ability that in case this thing goes south in a hurry, I'm ready for it. I'm going to have more of a chance of surviving this outcome. So what does this all mean about your dogs? Well, because of the fact that we can definitely and definitively state that eavesdropping does occur, and not just those fish back here, those green sword-tailed fish, but also in birds, and it's also been documented in mammals from canids to baboons, and your dog being a member of the canid class, we can obviously say that this will have an effect on them, and it does. I'm here to tell you, I have gotten in arguments with people, believe it or not, as nice as I am, yeah, it's just, there's a few times in which, uh, yeah, I was right, and yeah, I was right, until they, so anyway, so you had this little argument, and next thing you know, you look around and go, hey, cattle dog, where are you, buddy? Cattle dog? Man, he's gone. He's in some other room. Yeah, and then all of a sudden I approach him, he's like, and of course, I'm thinking like you guys, I'm going, what? Wait, why are you doing that? Yeah, it's one of the reasons why. Yeah, take a look at it. We see it in multiple dog homes. Even if you have four dogs, two get into a quick spat, watch the behavior of the other two dogs for a little while. And this can last from seconds to minutes to hours, days, weeks, and even months if it's a reoccurring event because of this eavesdropper effect. Uh, also watch it when you go to a daycare uh, or to a dog park. You take your dog there. If two dogs get into a fight, just look around real quickly. As long as it wasn't one of your dogs in the fight, you might want to look around and just see how do the other dogs behave. Are they starting to avoid? What are they doing? And if they are, you may think about, eh, probably a good time to go ahead and pack up here and just head on out. We'll come back again tomorrow. Because anytime you're avoiding, it means you're fearful. And anytime you're fearful, your, the threshold of my reactivity is dropping rapidly, coming down, down, down. So again, I go back to that example. You think you heard your back door being kicked in. You ran all these scenarios through your head. What are you going to do? What if this is that? You get up to go investigate. You tiptoe down the hallway and you look around that corner. Yeah. And fortunately, there's no one there. There's no one there. You check the door and you think, oh God, it just must have been the wind. It just had to have been the wind. But then you go sit back down, I guarantee you, for about a half an hour, any little thing, any little sound, any little bump in the dark, and you're going right back up that arousal call in a real hurry. Why? Because you're still there. You have not decayed all the way down to your calm zone. And anytime these observers saw this, their arousal column went up, they were agitated, they were fearful, they were anxious. They did everything they could to avoid the winners, and they also made sure that they checked their behavior with the losers if the losers, again, showed that they were willing to stay in that fight for a long time or they're willing to bring their A-game in that fight. 
So again, at the end of the day, what does all of this mean for you and how does it impact your relationship with your dog? You know, honestly, I think more than anything, I don't know if there's an immediate thing that we need to do afterwards and try and console our dogs and make up to them and make them do everything that we can to make them realize that that aggression was not directed at them. I think you just have to let it go. I think that more than anything, that's what I've done. I just let it go. I just walk away from the situation. I don't try to do anything out of the ordinary. In fact, I try not to even bring that much attention to it. It is what it is. It's there. And I'm just one of these believers that the more I know about my dogs, whether it's good news, bad news, good information, bad information, the more I know, the more equipped I am to do problem solving to change perhaps how I interact with my dog and how other people interact with my dog. What situations will I place my dog in or tend to avoid? Knowledge is truly power. It is truly power. So this just isn't trivial information, and I hope you never take it as such. If I'm going to bother to put it out there for you guys, None of my videos are gap fillers, like you see sometimes in a TV show or a series. You think, what the heck was up with that episode? Yeah, that's crazy, man. No, I put it out there because I believe it's important enough that you know that. Because what I have seen and what I have been told as I've interviewed countless dog owners who've been through this situation, they felt horrible. They're going, man, Brian, God, I, did I ruin my dog? Did, did, was, it, was it bad? Did, did, I, did I ruin my relationship? And they're super stressed about it. And again, this is the whole idea. Quit being so stressed. But remember, stress are those things that, that you, you can change. You know, again, that's your stress. I, I can change that, and you're not changing it. will get to change it. Try not to stress over those things that you can't. This thing here called eavesdropper effects, bystander effects, sometimes as it's known, oh, that's been around long before... Facebook, yeah, it has, long before then. And it's going to be here long afterwards. So guys, you can't change it. Just know it's there. Because now when you know it's there, you go, like me, you go, okay, I, I get what's happening. I'm with it. All right, buddy, I'm going to give you some time. And if anything, maybe I'll just kind of see if we can distract you from that a little bit there. So maybe we'll just go for a walk a little early today. Why don't we do that? And why don't we, hey, how about the ball? You want to play with the ball? Yeah, let's just try that. And man, I tell you what, you know, I'm, I know you got a lot of cheese yesterday, and, but I'm going to give you a little bit more today. That's all you do. But I'm not going to come over there and pet you and rub you and dote all over you. No. If anything, I may make you lay down, stay, place. Come to me, give you some cheese, give you a ball as a reward, go for a walk, and then at the end of the day, if I do nothing at all, it'll be fine. Because these things are going to continue. Unless you live in a bubble somewhere, arguments happen, fights happen, whether you take your dog to work, leave your dog at home, a lot of you are working from home, you're going to get into heated arguments, things are not going to go your way. Patience is down right now, agitation's up. It's going to happen. So if your dog avoids you, don't freak over it. Let it go. It'll be fine. Just realize it's smarter. Learn a few things. And it may adjust how it interacts with you for a little bit. But it'll be fine. I've never known a dog not to get over that. Okay, so known as the eavesdropper effect. Study yourself sometime. Okay, so that's your homework. Not just your dog yourself. If you, not where you're not the combatant, if you observe a fight, you eavesdrop on an argument. Do me a favor. See how you interact with that. What do you do next with the loser or the perceived winner? Yeah, jot it down. I'd love to hear about it sometime. You don't have to send your name. Drop it to me as an email. I won't share it with anyone else. But just keep that in your mind because again, if we don't control us, we can't control our own stress. How in the world are we going to control that of our dogs? Eavesdroppers. All right, man. I've got more stuff like this that in the old bag here. I'll be presenting to you guys on future videos. If you found this information beneficial, you think someone could actually use this, send it to them. Share it. And if you got something you want me to share on Facebook Live, send it my way. 
This one, that was mine, okay? Every now and then, I'm gonna share some of my stuff. All right, guys, enjoy the rest of your day. Be safe.